Actually speaking, uh, I wasn't born at, at Balga, but uh, I uh, was born in the northwest of New South Wales at uh, Balga Drive, okay. and uh, because our family uh, had a number of old properties, yeah. and uh, it was one of them there near Balga Drive, okay. and a place called Henry and Die, yeah. and uh, that was a corruption of an Aboriginal word. Ing and Ing died. So they got us anglicised as much as they and could. And what did that word mean, did you know? No, I don't. Uh, I do know that our property at Balga was Myriad. Mm -hmm. That's the anglicised version. Yeah. But uh, the Aboriginal version was Muria. Okay. So you were Very born, guttural. Okay. You were born on the at Henry and died. And, at two, your and that, when I was age three, my mother died. Okay, and that's when I was, you came to live with. Yeah, I came to live with Alexander Nicholas. Okay. And uh, he didn't have any children. Mm -hmm. And uh, he reared me right up to manhood. Okay. So that's my association. And uh, while I was there, I, uh, I met a lot of fairly important people uh, because he was a great academic, self-taught yeah. academic. And uh, he uh, seemed to attract a lot of academics, so they came to our home. And uh, so I met professors there, and, and Mr. Haslam, and twice, I met him twice there. And uh, so I absorbed all the teachings of my uncle. Yes. I remember my uncle had a lot of artifacts, Aboriginal artifacts, and uh, he uh, so lovingly you know, touched them and, mm. and held them and uh, uh, one was a boomerang and he he hardly liked to give it up when he yeah. left, if yeah. you know what I mean, he had that. So these artefacts are now gone to a particular yeah. singleton single single historical society? Just, yes, yes. yes. I, one uh, of the guides. I brought that down uh, just as a bit of background to our family. Okay. Uh, we were second fleeters mm. and um, it was, we had a land grant to uh, uh, at Balga in 1826 and uh, so our family's been there right up till about a few years ago. 1995. So, so we have had a, a big uh, background with, with the growth of the, you know, the colony. Yes. But um, the only reason I brought it was to, uh, oh well I suppose, uh, explain to you that our uh, commitment to the colony, you yes, know. Yes. Oh, First of it, all, the family were uh, in the Hawkesbury district mm -hmm. and uh, they were innkeepers and storekeepers mm -hmm. back in those days. And uh, then they were given land grant there at Windsor. Okay. And uh, then they were given a land grant at, at Balga. Yes. And uh, that my great great grandmother uh, rode a bullock which was led and uh, she nursed a baby and uh, they came over the mountain. She was the first white woman mm. to come over the mountain. Yes. Two bullocks were led and a uh, black fellow or an Aboriginal, whichever way you like to put it, uh, uh, led the party through the mountain. Yes. So uh, I think it was a four day journey and when they arrived at Bulga there were two uh, colonies of Aboriginals, mm -hmm. 600 of them total, mm -hmm. and uh, they were just two white, three white people because her brother came with her. Yes. And, uh, and how do you deal with that situation? It must have been a bit extremely scary. 600. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said they could have wiped them out of any, yes. any day or night. So these tribes of Aboriginals, did they know their names? And well, if they did, I don't know. And, uh, but I can't just imagine a woman riding a bullock, mm. nursing a baby and yes. coming over those mountains. And, and when they arrived there, there were 600 Aboriginals yes. there. Yes. And, uh, but my whole uncle wasn't as um, kind in his description. I think he did use the word savages well, a that's, few times. No, but that's that was the language of the time. It was the language of the time. The time. They weren't Aboriginals, they were blacks. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. no messing around. Yeah. But um, they had a wonderful relationship with them. In other words, 
they lived there for, I think it was three years, because land grants you had to occupy them. Yes. They had to be occupants. Mm -hmm. So they put in that three years, and uh, then they went back to Windsor, but they still then held that grant. Yes. And they used to come back with some forwards, but I believe they never went over the mountains again. They mm -hmm. used to go down to uh, Newcastle mm -hmm. or Morpeth, catch a boat, and the boat would take them round to Sydney, and then they'd go up to Para uh, well, not Parramatta, uh, yeah, well, Parramatta and, and Windsor, but still held the property. Ian, can I have a bit of background on you, like your, when you were born? Yeah, well, I was born at Bogabri, uh in 1924, 1921, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to crib a few years. No, look, <laughs> You don't look at that. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll have my 87th birthday. Uh, so uh, then my you, mother... You're a youngin' by our standards here. <laughs> I'm, I'm archiving the papers of Jim Daddy at the moment, and I'm four. Oh, so he's, he's, uh, he's in a sad state, but his mind's fantastic. Yeah. And um, he's so alert, but his body he says it's just falling apart around him. Yeah. Can't move, you know? yeah. um, but I ring him up every so often to ask him questions about the various Well, I always parts. think when the Lord designed us, he should have had spare parts. Oh, God, it's just like cars, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you just start falling to bits, and eventually when the car can't go, that's when you, the body completely claps up. So I'm a complete believer in this idea that your spirit goes on somewhere into another body or something. but. You know, because you see, mm. Jim is so young and alive inside that mind, yeah, yeah. and um, it's uh, yeah, it's just the body and the apparatus that we get that wears out. Well, I think it's a natural evolution. I mean, we're not meant to last forever. Yes. We're yes. meant to make way. I think so. Somebody think so. else. It would be extremely boring if we were. It would be half as as mysterious as what Adam is here trying to tree trace. But the, um, this expedition from Sydney, I'm very interested in. Yeah. Professor Anderson. So you can't remember the years that this. Oh was no, 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 no. That, you can't that remember was, how old well, you were. Dad, Dad was Dad was born in twenty one. The year that yeah. this manuscript would have been round about when it was yeah. written. Okay. Because yeah. it, I think it was yeah. eighteen twenty one. Eighteen twenty one. So yeah. Dad, you know. Yes, you've got to project it backwards, yes. like you know, yes. and it, back before my so time. So he had written this survey of the history of Boulder and gave backgrounds to the family. Now you've had a look at that manuscript. Mm -hmm. So there's a few. Oh, just just a just minor. a few words and okay. things that I think would be um, could be changed or should be changed. So does that tally up with your understanding of, of the? I, 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 I think if you read through that, yeah. a lot of it is very factual. It okay. is very factual. Good. So yeah, may, and chances are this. I don't know how obtainable this manuscript has ever been. We didn't even know it existed. Okay. Yeah. You might have. I did. You might have. I, I did. did. I did. But I did. didn't know. If you'd have asked me for it, I haven't got a copy, in no, other words. No. But, but well, I, 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 I was, knew he wrote I, I typed this out myself when I went through it, and we were very interested, especially in the Bora ceremony. Yeah. So when you talk about your uncle being interested in these religions, this Bora ceremony interested me religion. because it was not... The done thing that you spilt the beans on. Oh no! What went on in oh, these no. things, and you were under risk of death. But when you actually read it, it was like an eyewitness account. Whoever mm. recorded this. Yeah. Well, you've got to remember that, that that this all happened before my uncle's time. Yes. You so see. So where did he get the? Well, he got that information from the family, okay. because when this ball was on, I was only telling Garth the other day, uh, white people was were there but they were not allowed within miles okay. of the Bora ceremony. They had sentinels uh, with big spears. It but I, it does not say in the manuscript that there was a favoured white woman allowed. You haven't got a copy of the... Of the your yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. You continue on yeah. and I'll see if I can find it. Yeah. So there were sentinels posted oh, yes. around this oh, area. Yeah. Now, where it was the place, the manuscript says it was on your property, but no, you're saying no, it was no, not? No, no, okay. definitely. So where was the location? Of this well, story? it was on the Wallaby Scrap Road uh, between Bulga and Walkers. Okay. It'd be mining ground now. So I'd just say, all oh, traces. So where the mining, where the big Bulga mine is now is? Well, it's it's... In that vicinity, yeah. I can't. I can't categorically say that I dug that well, up. Well, Wallaby Scrub Road runs between um, Walkworth and Balga. Yeah, yeah, but, but what they call the crossroads. If you, have you ever been out onto the Putty Road to Sydney? I don't know. I got taken out to Broke, 
Yep. And just told some stories out there about it. And have have you been out to Bahrain, you know, the, the cave painting that See, I remember my, my association with Percy Haslam when I was a school kid. Yeah. He used to take a lot of schools out to this yeah. Boandy on the Smith's property. Is this the Miami. big, the yes, big, yes, yes, yes. and the big, um, uh, and he used to go out there. Well, it's on the way out there, okay. and I mean, you get to what they call the crossroads, mm. which is uh, probably like five kilometres uh, south of uh, Mount Thorley, yeah. and then one road goes to Broke, one goes to. Bulga, yeah. one goes to walk with the other one back to Singleton. Yeah. So if you turn if you turn right onto the Wallaby Scrub Road yeah. and head back towards Walker, what Dad is saying is in that halfway between those is two where roads, the poor are. Yeah. Yes. But but I don't think there's any living person could take you to the site. Yeah. Uh, because when my uncle uh, took Professor Anderson and his crew there, yeah. the the trees Big trees that they'd marked were all dead, so my uncle tells me. Uh, they got white paint or, or chalk and they marked all that. Yeah. What know. happened to these trees? Yeah. Well, well, a white woman, yep. who on one occasion had come with her black servant, yep. to see the sights, was compelled to go and lie down also. When the women were all properly placed, a band of blacks, perhaps a hundred in number, with the boom bats among them, Suddenly came in. So there was a white woman. Yeah, well, I've got no idea. Yeah. I've got no idea. Yeah. But, so, but, but I think that was more rarity than I. Yeah. But this idea that the initiates were put under sort of a layer of bark <laughs> and for time, you don't know, it depends. What, what, on I, what I read into it is they tried to scare the producers out of this to make them uh, fearful. Yeah. And then they sort of, once they thought that they were but, scared enough. Yeah. But women when uh, They had to lie face down, they couldn't they, 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 they were just excluded, yeah. you know. But it was a male ceremony. It's a male ceremony. And uh, the idea is you stayed under that cover until... Yeah, and apparently... You were let out and showed a carved tree. Yeah. yeah. And they told you the teaching relating to that carved tree. And you had to remember back it. Under the you, were, you had to remember it. And I think, from what I can gather, they weren't initiated until they could recite each trip. Yeah. But uh, the, another amazing thing I always thought was that these tribes of blacks were always warring with one another. Yes. But when this Bora was mooted, the word was passed and these uh, blacks came from hundreds of miles yes. away and they were given safe passage yes. through all the rivals. In other words, they were sparing them yesterday. Yeah. But they were all that they were safe, safe yeah. like, like the Olympic Games. Yeah, 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 a bit, yeah, well, a bit like when that. When I got taken out, to, because I, I came across this manuscript, and the very night that I read it, a news broadcast came out about miners having a dispute at the Boulder Mine. I thought, oh God. With all things like this, I just think, I bet you they've gone and the mine. Well, well exactly. I, I would really? say, if you're talking about Sphinx's place, I don't think that's been mined yet. No, but. but Nobody on earth could go and no. point you to. You'd have to go. You'd have to. You'd have to leave an extra. So if, you have, if you're saying that the area hasn't been mined yet, then mm. generally we may have some hope. Yeah. But with the trees, I'm very worried because um, the Aborigines that I've spoken to said when the timber gets to now, they they target bora trees as their first. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing they would cut. Cut down. And if they have survived, you can see them. And I was shown one. Yeah. In this vicinity, in a schoolyard. Mm. And the guy said that's a tree, carved tree, and no, mm. not necessarily a board, but it would have had a design. Mm. Yeah. But there was a carved tree sitting there, they almost like stand there without no one knowing what they are. But I, I'd reckon if you could get in touch with the uh, Sydney Museum, that, will. that in their archives, yes, they, I will. they would I will search for this report. Because um, my uncle had a, a set of the data. Do you know how historical? But you've got to, it's local landholders that alert you to certain situations. Now, because my uncle was so well known as a local historian, um, he one day had a person phone in and say, oh, I'd like you to come out on my property, and that was at Mason Dew, yeah. which is just on the opposite side of the river to Singleton. Yeah. And uh, he said, I'm sure you'd be terribly interested in what I've come across. So I remember going out with my uncle and it was what he called a workshop and it was high up on the uh, escarpment of the river 
where they could watch everywhere, if you like. And uh, we found dozens and dozens and dozens of these uh, stone knives. And, and uh, he, he definitely said it was a workshop. Mm -hmm. they, they just sat there and chipped away and, and, and made these, these artefacts. And, uh, and, th and that was to use, not, not to sell to tourists. This mm -hmm. was way back. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got to be alert to these things. So he didn't have a clue it was there. And, uh, but I remember going with him, and uh, we, we just couldn't believe the richness of, of, yes. of what was there. Yes. But I think our country is so vast, it, it's just a huge landmass. It is. And uh, because we had a, <clears throat> uh, my family have always had a property. Um, they had a property in the mountains, uh, which was a mountain valley uh, between Balfour and Jerry's Plains. So in other words, Balco was here, Jerry's Plains was there, and, and this property was there. And you actually had to go up watercourse uh, until you came to a main ridge, and then you went over the main ridge, you went down another watercourse that led the other, ran west. Yeah. And there were Aboriginal uh, caves in the sense that there were the hands and the, and the boomerangs and all that in the, in the back. Well, the average person doesn't know that. No. That's there, you know. And uh, what's there now, I, d I don't know. Yeah. But we, we owned this property and we used to, the only way you get this was right, books. And uh, we'd, we'd go past these, these paintings and, and that, and we just accepted the fact we knew it was there. Yes. But the average uh, historian or, or just wouldn't know it's there. And that must be all over. Yes. It's like finding the wall of the Wallamy Pine. Yes. It's been there for time immemorial yeah. and yet nobody's seen it. I look, I just if, you read, if you read that book there, that'll amaze you. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our people were uh, christened by Marston. Yes. The Reverend yes, Marston. Samuel Marston. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, your, your uncle's uh, books, what happened to all these papers and materials? You don't know? Before? No, mm. but, they, but, but he was survived by his wife. Yeah. And Dad then inherited the, the property. I inherited the, the property, yeah. but I had to pay his wife an annuity and she lived in Sydney. Okay. They were actually separated for quite a number of years before his death. So, you know, there was a lot of things that went over the US. But uh, no, uh, I, so I think he wrote this manuscript. Yeah, and he would have written other. Oh yes, he well, did. Well, I, I was talking to Dad the other night after I emailed you. Yeah. Now tell him about the Hitler letter. Yeah. Well, you see, I, I, I could talk for days about my uncle because. Well, I've got his <laughs> HQ. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it literally. I've got. I've got. I've got and I've got a spare tape in the back, <laughs> so it's just talk endlessly. I, I don't know. Uh, he, he, I don't know if I'll see you again. So, yeah, yeah we, we well, have a really 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 And I know, yeah, I know that this material would be of great interest to people. Yeah. This, is, this is the big one. This is, okay. this is important. Okay. But I reckon this is tell the story. Us, tell yeah, us well, the well, he, um, amongst all his other achievements, he was an inventor. And he had at least six inventions that were. Uh, what's the word? Patent. Patent. And uh, in, in 1939, he, before, uh, the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the inventor, but that fellow that brought out the jets, yes. the Englishman, uh, Wettel, Wittel or Wettel or whatever he's doing on it. And uh, <clears throat> so he invented uh, an aeroplane propeller. And they tested it in the... Uh, tunnels and it, it, it was about 50% better than the, than the ones that they had. And you know what he shaped it on? A bird's wings. Mm -hmm. He used to collect these bird's wings and you know the curvature and, yes. and everything. Yeah. And uh, of course birds, uh, they, it's, uh, nature's so wonderful because if they want a bird to hover 
they have a certain shape. We, if they want speed, they have a different shape in the wing. And, and he studied all that and he built this propeller and actually had that, like it wasn't just a drawing, he had the drawings, but he actually had the wooden propellers made yes. by experts yeah. and they tested it in the, in the tunnels and it was 50% better uh, than anything they had, but just then out came the jet, mm. which made all prop propellers obsolete. Yes. But anyhow, he he had all these. He he, uh, he also um, he also um, uh, made a site for naval guns uh, and the pitching and the, the tossing of the the waves and everything. And uh, that was uh, he went. Uh, he visited the, the battleships. You know, he, he, he was lived at Bulka, but he, he was a so well known. Yes, so and well and nice so the, the next thing that happened, he, he got a personal letter from Hitler, yeah. signed by Hitler. What year was it? In 39. Now, yeah, Dad was 21, so he, he was 18. So, so he had a good recollection of this. Yes. And, and they invited, Hitler invited him to Germany, and he would pay all his expenses. Uh, to come over there and design things in 39. Do you still have that letter? No, I don't. <laughs> no, that was I, eBay for you. I, I, I think, I think, Wouldn't that be amazing? I think his wife might have got that. But it was signed by, by Hitler. Yeah. But of course he he was very patriotic. And yes. War was brewing and, and uh, he wasn't going to have a party. No. But, but I think this ties in what a... Well, there's a lot of special people in this world, yes. and been a will be, yes. but he's, he's <clears throat> I'm not just saying this because I'm related to him, but he is certainly, you know, up there amongst the people of his time. And, and then, the then he had and an then intense yes, interest it's, it's, in medicine, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he studied medicine. Well, and look at the breadth of interests. That's, uh, that's just his incredible thing about it. And uh, he, uh, then he decided he'd make his own scalpels. Mm. <laughs> And he actually was able to, to make scalpels out of stainless steel. Mm. And uh, he had a lot of doctor friends, and one yeah. of them said to me one day, you're a very privileged young man, he said, to be living with this man. Yes. He said, he's the only unprofessional person that I'll allow to take my appendix out. <laughs> 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 now, we asked the question before, what did he do? Did he have an official job well, description or not? He was a kept man okay. because there were four brothers yeah. and they had a partnership and my father was the head of it and they were all on separate properties but all the resources mm -hmm. came in okay. and uh, he was considered to be slightly strange. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been eccentric. Yeah, he he was, was eccentric. So they just kept him basically doing what he did. Yeah. 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 That's what we would love to Yeah, but he didn't look at it that way. He was mm -hmm. a very humble man. And, but, but to give you an idea of his thinking yeah. and his uh, uh, beliefs, he, he said to me, he was always posing me little problems, you know, and I had to solve them. Yeah. And he said to me one day, and he always never called me in, he always called me my boy. Yes. And uh, he said, my boy, he said, who do you believe? was the greatest man the world has ever seen. And he said, we'll leave Jesus Christ out of this. We won't, because he's different. But he said, just the ordinary human beings, who do you consider? And I thought about the first thing that sprang to my mind was Bonaparte and, and a few of the others, you know. And he said, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. And I said, all right. He said, well, he said, what did Bonaparte, for instance, achieve? He said he killed millions and millions of people to further his own personal ambition. He said he, he was a curse. He said he was a scourge. He said, no. He said, well, I said, who do you believe? He said, I believe Gandhi was. And I said, why do you say that? Well, he said he never resorted to violence. He said he took on the most powerful nation on the world and he threw them out of India. Now he said, who could achieve that? 
and he said he lived, he uh, just wore rags and sandals and, you know, had his hunger strikes and everything, but he said he achieved what no other man's ever done in history by peaceful means. So he said, from my book, he's got to be the greatest man that ever lived. So that was his thinking, yes. you know, his philosophy. He was very good. Yeah. And he, are you still in contact with his widow? Or she oh, no, she's, she's passed away long ago. So what happened to her estate? Well, I suppose we went to the her family. Okay. You've got to understand. Mm. You've know, got to understand that the Irish, Irish uh, wasn't her natural son, yeah. and uh, there's a vast gap, and yes. she was a very cold person. I was just going to say, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I, uh, I, I just could never, never relate to her. You know, what I mean? she was uh, quite an accomplished person herself. Like she painted, and she was amazing. What was her name? Millicent, Millicent, but she was Sylvester. Her name was maiden name was Sylvester, but uh, <clears throat> she just seemed to have no warmth in her. Yeah, Ian, just give me a second. I, uh, I think in my lifetime, the the two things in technology that I've noticed most is travel and and uh, communication. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, uh, I can remember Kingsford Smith battling mm -hmm. over the waves down to fourteen feet. And uh, because you know, I'm going on to 90, yes. and I can remember that. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at it today, they've got these great planes that'll take 500 people. Um, Ian, you lived with your uncle for how long? All my life, all your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, he when you were married, you then moved off to, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, just another house on the property, okay, because there were a number of houses on the property. Uh, I suppose he influenced my life more than anybody on earth. Uh, I, I was privileged to live with the most extraordinary man. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had his failings. Yes. Like, he had this phenomenal memory. Mm -hmm. But he possibly his turn to go to town, and I'd say, uh, don't forget to bring us back a pound of butter. Never think of it. Mm -hmm. Never think of it. With um, his... Did, did they send you to school? Well, no. Well, I went to the Balga school, okay. which was just a, a little rural school, one teacher, yeah. 40 pupils. Yeah. So you can imagine how much education you got. Yeah. So and when you got to school, could you compare it next to what you were taught by your uncle? Well, did it compare or did you I feel could, like I could, Well, I'll give you a, a graphic description. <laughs> uh, I thought I, you would. <laughs> 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 I... Uh, we were all asked to come up and stand in front of class and recite poetry. So I got up and, and uh, started reciting uh, Sir Walter uh, Scott. On the heights of Killacranky, yesterday morning our army lay. And the teacher, he looked at me and he said, I don't want to hear any more of that rubbish, he said. I want to hear Henry Lawson. So there was a cultural, you know, divide there. In other words, what my uncle had taught me about Shakespeare and Keats and, and Wordsworth and all those things <laughs> were just <laughs> not acceptable. So I was read, I, as I said, I went to a school where it was basic yeah. and and uh, there was no school, no high school in Singleton. Yeah. And And uh, so my uncle said, well, I'm going to take over your education. Okay. And uh, I got the greatest education in the world. But Dad's mother was a guy called Alexander Munro's eldest granddaughter. Okay. Now Alexander Munro was the first mayor of Singleton. He built a gas works in the town. He he basically bought John uh, Benjamin Singleton's assets when he went to liquidation back in the eighteen few sixties. Yes. And he's my great great grandfather, yeah. and he also planted vineyards yeah. and seen them in the 1850s, 1860s. So you're in vineyard for her? Yeah. yeah. I was a vineyard on for 60 years. Okay. See, Miria is our, our, our uh, winery is Miria Park. Okay, that's Miria nice. being the property name. Yeah. Okay. Well, John yeah. Eshar bought the Miria John property. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, well, John, John purchased Miria in, in 1995. Oh. Um, 
Yeah, so we kept the label and kept it all going, and, and you know, oh, Reese, my brother Reese is the winemaker, and, and actually Reese is nearly a bit like Uncle. Yeah, he's a bit the same type. A bit the same type. Very, he's, he's very yeah. talented winemaker, and he's creative. And he's creative. So well, I, well, I said this to Uncle. I said, "Well, you've studied uh, all this theology," and I said, uh, do, "Do you believe?" In Christianity, or do you believe? He said, I believe there's a supreme being. He said, What form that supreme being takes, what can it say? He, he can be an Egyptian, or he can be black, or he can be white. Or, but he said, And I said, What do you base that on? Well, he said, The most primitive of people believe in that hero. So he said that proves that it's implanted in a human being mm. that there is a hero. Mm. His interest was so broad mm. that that was his outstanding okay, so feature. Yeah. Like, uh, he, you got to remember this man never went to university. Mm. Never went to university and yet he was a giant mm. academically. That mm. he, he had this. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, he said, you don't need to go to university. He said, I can teach you everything, and he said, possibly better mm. than you'll get at university. He said, the only thing you won't get is a little bit of grade. Now, when he said he was a kept man, um, what was the business that he was... Well, well it, it was, was agriculture. Shop. agriculture. Ag and so what did the family do? What well, they, they were the mostly graziers. graziers okay. Yes, they, they had four or five properties. Yeah. And uh, they just ran sheep and cattle and, and uh, over all those properties. Yeah. And my uncle was an equal partner. Uh, and so he just received his share yeah. and, and he could uh, live, very little. live simply <laughs> on that. <laughs> Listen, don't knock it. That's what we're aiming oh, to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. Everyone. Wouldn't yeah. it be fantastic? I mean, you know, you know what? Someone in that. So but obviously the brothers... Saw something in him that they allowed him to do. Well, they did. Uh, like because uh, you imagine uh, today yeah, what they would have been. They, they would have been your yeah. 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 Oh, so it's so it's they understood him. Yeah. yeah. Well, they respected his mental capacity. Mm. That uh, in the business they were in. And his brothers, do you know their names? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, my father was uh, Reginald Victor, and yeah. then yeah. the next one was uh, Arthur yeah. Alexander. Arthur Alexander, yes. and then you had um, uh, Ivo Mac, mm -hmm. and uh, then you had my uncle, of course, Nick, Alexander Nicholas. And they were all living in. Oh, no, they, they lived on the proper different property. Like that said, there was Henry and I, Bogger Bride, there was Miria, yeah. then. And Milgar at Stone, yep. and which is where Jim David and I are. Yeah, so, yeah, and then Durable. All right. So they were scattered across the world. Yeah. yeah. But, but they worked as either either brothers. Okay. But uh, mm. uh, I was just going to make another point, but I slipped my mind now. It was but, just you, but you said that when they needed help, he went to help. Oh, yeah. But he didn't actively work. But his heart wasn't in. Day to day. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he, he just didn't. He was a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. But uh, the strange thing was, and uh, I'm being disloyal to my father, but my father couldn't die a candle on him. Yeah. You're not on him. Yeah. But your father, but your father was a, a good business. Oh person. yes, he was the head of. He the was firm. the manager. Yeah. He but, was, but but it, it, and he was like, the eldest. He brother. was the eldest. But I liken it to to yeah. Reese and myself. I mean, yeah. I manage. Yeah. I'm the managing director. Yeah. But I can't make wine. Yeah. I'm not the artistic one. No. My no. uncle's concentration was so great that he'd go without meals, yeah. uh, just concentrating on what he was doing. doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, meals were it's irrelevant, it's but um, he uh, uh, could always drag out a quote mm. to fit the situation, yeah. you know, and uh, it might come from Shakespeare, uh, it, it might come from the Bible, Yes, uh, but he had them all stored away there, yes, yes. and and when this occasion arose, you know, I, I remember there was one very, uh, well, I suppose, pompous fellow you, you'd call him, a big native himself, Winborn, like say these days, yeah. and uh, so <clears throat> anyhow, after he left, 
Uncle Sidney Money, what did you think of this chap? And I said, oh, I thought he was a bit full of himself. And he said, well, I'll quote from Shakespeare. He said, they pompous ass and he went. <laughs> <laughs> well, Uncle reckoned that Shakespeare was one of the filthiest tongues men you could ever get. Yeah. You know. But these, I know what you mean about these things. I mean, my mother's got a few of them, which is, and I mean, it's difficulty because you've got Shakespeare that wrote it in the English tongue. But when you've got an Italian saying, which you have to translate it in English, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't come, it doesn't come off. But the line that my mum always used to say about lying, lying was that lies have short legs. Okay, that's an Italian sound, mm-hmm. but it's this idea that it means people. And you eventually see lies for what they are because. Yeah, they shorten and belittle people. So I think that gives you a sort of an indication of where he came from. Yes. He had this uh, thirst for knowledge and and a uh, creative I feel that he lives in you. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, by talking about him, you're giving me a bit of a clearer picture. He's the greatest man I've ever met. Mm. And I've met a lot of well-educated people, but he was the greatest because they just were narrow and tunnel vision. So if you're saying with this manuscript, he, he wrote it obviously a, a history of Bolivar and appended to it this bore, this description of the bore. Yeah. You're saying that um, did he construct it from, who do you, how, how do you, what are your thoughts on this manuscript? And how well, I saw it as odd too. Because I mean, there, is a, there would be a lot more history to Bolivar than what he wrote about the Yeah, but. Well, and then, like you said, then all of a sudden there's this bore yeah. attached to the bottom of it. And I've had, we've got another Unless he felt it was such a, it, made, you, it was probably the biggest thing that ever happened in But Bowl. if you look at that. And, you know, things like the boom bat, I've never heard of that expression. And uh, with sometimes with Aboriginal words, people, I mean, because the spelling is, oh, yeah, yeah, is, oh, yeah. is, is uh, yeah, it can be any spelling. It's not the spelling, it's the sound. It, it's this. Um, oh, my uncle said all Aboriginal language was gut. And, and it was very difficult to translate that into English. But he obviously was in contact with people who were giving him this information. Oh, and yeah. this, to me, is a very like, eyewitness account. Even though it purports not to be. Yeah, it's mm. very close. When you read it, it's... It doesn't there. say, we think this happened. Mm. It no. This is what well, happened. It starts off saying, because obviously he understood the ceremonial responsibility mm. to pick up the volume and stuff. He's dead. Mm. So, he had a great respect for their culture, mm. you know, and uh, he uh, was very interested in telepathy, and uh, he said they were masters at it, mm. the, uh, you know, these witch doctors, oh, yes. or whatever you like to call them. Yeah, 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 and uh, he gave me many instances that... Do you remember any of them? No, it was the translation of messages, you know, and not yeah. by Snoke Signal. Well, but the fellow who took me out to Boulder, Boulder showed me that apple core of what the mine left, and he said, look, that to the Aboriginal world was the equivalent of that Telstra communications tower. Mm. All messages went through that. Yeah. You know, it was a very, very important place. He said that um, he then took me to other locations around and said, underneath the ground here, you'll find the bones of thousands of possum, possums. This mm. is what they ate. Yeah. How do you feed this many people? Mm. And it was possum, basically. Would well, you them. imagine that uh, when our people came to Bulga, 600? Mm. That's a lot of people yeah. to feed. Yeah. No, and what happened to them? The Where did they go? Yeah. I, I can't answer that. I mm. can't answer it. But you've got to think that's back in 1826. Yeah. In growing up, did you come across many Aboriginal people? No, 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 no. They were all gone. They were all gone. All gone. Yeah. So, you know, everything my uncle told me was like fairy stories, you know. Yes. Least they were. So, he loved it so much and, you know. So it, would this have been an account that your uncle recorded or he would have obtained this information? Oh look, he he he's like you like you're doing now. He collect he collect information wherever he could get it. But obviously, if the borer was eighteen fifty two, he was not even around. No. So how old was he when he died? About sixty. Ah, uh, seventy six. 
So he might have been actually closer to them. He would have been, I mean, been he would have been relying on what his parents did. Yeah. Or people that were elderly in 1852. See, he could have been born as early as 1890, I reckon. Yeah. We had some young blacks in my house 50 years ago. And the older blacks would come to us and ask us to allow these lads off for a time to be made in that. Yeah, well, I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't. Sometimes the boys would be away for the best part of the year. Sometimes the old man would bring back the boys in a short time, saying that things were not ready for the boy, and that other blacks were slow to come in, and so forth, and that the ceremonies could not go on. So it's like they did have people with them that would be let off, mm-hmm. almost like for military service or, yeah, or, I think so. you know, I or think, initiation. I think so. See, the different thing with our culture is that we have confirmation, which mm-hmm. is supposed to be just like on the face. And there you are, you're a man. Mm. In this culture... They knock your feet. Well, I wonder why we're acting. Well, that's right. Because if they want to change your body. Right. Your body is no longer that of a boy. Right. That's true as well. They tear that relationship apart right. and they scarify you. So that your body mm. is no longer that of a child. You've mm. now got a man, you're a man, mm. boy. And you've got, you know, a wife ready mm. for you and everything. Mm. Um, and you've got the normal term and a, a different language. Yeah. The, the amazing thing is, so so the so the the elders had a different language to the young boys. Well, they said the they had secret language. They, yes, they had the magic. They were, yes, they said they were women had a particular language with words. Percy said the um, initial the, the initial mm-hmm. men had a language, mm-hmm. and then the Karagals or the the magicians had another mm-hmm. another language of the girl, of mm-hmm. which only a few words survived. That that was his take. Mm. On it, I don't know if that's real or true or not, but different languages within uh, within language. Yeah, mm. right. and so it's quite an interesting. Um, but I, I think uh, the thing about the Aboriginals that uh, impressed Uncle mostly from an intellectual point of view was their powers of thought transmission, and 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 it happened. It you know it, they were able to send signals by the minds. Uh, and uh, of course, the only other place that is records in Africa mm. where you had these witch doctors mm. that did the same thing. Mm. And uh, we think they're very inferior intellectually, but mm. Mm. so it, it, that interested him immensely. Yeah. You know. yeah. But for him, for him, for someone like him to devote so much time to that, he must have thought it was. He must have, and I've got a feeling that it was one of those boys that were on the, mm. on the property that taught mm. Colton this, yeah. and that this is what he's recorded. <clears throat> um, because he mentions the gods, uh, he mentions their, their yeah. beliefs. It's just, and then once you get into the nitty gritty, he's recording the actual yeah. statement of. Mm. While he's saying that he may have sawn it from a far away, um, mm. they got, they got the. But, when but, I'm in, the, but in, 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 in reality, well, this scrub road, as the crow flies from Miria, would have been what? Five or six miles. Five or six miles. Wasn't far. It because wasn't far. So because our family recorded that... Have you, you been to this location recently? Oh, no, no. You might have to have a visit on My uncle... Uh, See so if this is true? This is mm-hmm. No, I doubt it. He, he said the bushfires destroyed, destroyed mm-hmm. most of the big trees, you know, they, that they did all those carving on. But uh, it was he when he was able to look at it. Yes, they were all there. Um, and now I don't know if it's the same Bora, but uh, Brian showed me pointing when we were at these various locations in Broad, pointed to this guy and said that was a Bora around over there. It was now someone's backyard. No, I doubt. You doubt? Know? Very much. Because my, my Brian... uncle said this was the uh, the last Bora. And they, don't, they didn't have them every year. They, they, I think they were in generational things. Okay. Because, as you were saying, these kids grew up and then they get to a certain age of puberty or whatever. Yeah. And, and then it's time to initiate them. Yes. You know, it's, it's but generational. But it sounds like they might have had borers in different regions. And then if they didn't have one coming up, it sounds like they'd go to another yeah, region. I'm also interested in knowing that I can't understand why a woman would I, th- I think from what I remember of that, she stumbled on it. On it. Okay. They didn't spear her. No. 
but she had to, well, she wasn't welcome, yeah. in other words. Okay. Um, but but Dad, you all, now there is such a thing as a bore of stone, true? No. I, 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 but no. I thought of the museum in Singleton, there is actually a bore of stone. <clears throat> yeah, no, well, you could say a bore of stone, there was a phallic stone. My uncle had had that, and it was <clears throat> about that high, uh, came to a sharp point and then came down, and, and at the base were two indentations, yeah. and he tells me the indentations was to represent the, the female organs, yeah. and the, uh, the stone itself was to represent the penis. Yes. And uh, the, it's, uh, it's not a, well, it might have been used at the Bora, yeah. but... Uh, well, maybe that's a good point. It was used at the Bora, well, but where yes. else would they use? Well, it's it's an initiation into uh, into manhood. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you would understand. I mean, my understanding of the carved trees was that each represented a particular teaching. Mm. They had to remember that teaching, mm. and then back under the, under <coughs> the bark they went. Yeah. And but, each uh, child was different. Each yeah, but he person. definitely had this stone, as I said. It was about but so I'm pretty sure it was in the museum. Oh yes, that's right. So if, I mean, we work on the drive to things. So you want to look? Well, you know, we'll just have to see because I'd say that if those artifacts went to the museum, then they might have some papers as well that went along with them. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with 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 Port Macquarie. If they got this diary, I don't know how they've got that. No, it might have been Haslam gave them. Well, I get the feeling Percy found it there. Made oh. a copy and then ended up in, oh. in this box. Oh well, he definitely came up to our place twice. I can remember that okay. quite clearly. Very nice man, you know, to talk to. And that sort to of talk thing. to your uncle. Yeah, to talk to my uncle, but of course I was there, so I I talked to him too. Well, that's very early because Percy didn't really become a didn't end up in the university until much later. So yes, he must have been still working for the Herald at that time. If you're, yeah, well, if you're talking about yeah. the 60s, yeah. it would have been before not, he died not, in the sure. early 60s. Yeah. It would have been yeah. a young man. Oh. Mid, middle age. Nearly approaching middle age, is the way I would have described him. <clears throat> he uh, was rather a thick set man, mm. and uh, you could definitely see that he was swarthy in the skin. Mm. But it, there was no supposition about it. He he just said to me, he said, I'm part Aboriginal. Mm -hmm. And I think his grandmother or somebody like that was mm -hmm. Aboriginal. But uh, he was quite a credit to himself. Mm -hmm. Very good. We've got to run. It's been a great pleasure. I'm very happy.